After Mike called Greg a two-faced, sociopathic, lying sucker, and Greg uploading no less than 10 videos on Mike, it seems there's no way back for the pair's relationship and they are currently having one of the most fierce online beefs in modern memory. The two are titans of the fitness world, with each channel having over 2 million subscribers each. However, it's Greg's channel which is usually focused on drama. But what has caused this very public callout from Dr. Mike? And why are people saying that Dr. Mike Isretel lost this online feud? Well, it all starts with Greg Doucette around five years ago. For those who aren't aware, Greg holds a master's degree in kinesiology and is also an IFBB professional bodybuilder. And he uses these accolades to critique and talk about other influencers. Most of his videos are very controversial and one of these videos was uploaded on the 5th of December in 2019, titled Jeff Nippard vs Jeff Cavalier. Is volume killing your gains? In this video, Greg looks at science-based lifter Jeff Nibbard, who gave a very in-depth approach into his science-based lifting methodology, all while giving visual representations in different graphs and studies. This heavy focus on science goes against Coach Greg's philosophy of just training harder than last time, and he made his feelings very clear in the rants he embarked on in this video. People are lazy, people don't train hard, and so to tell someone to hold back when they're already holding back is moronic and asinine. Tell them, work harder. How hard? Harder than you worked! Despite Greg's explosive delivery, many commenters thought he raised great points. His screaming actually helps me get his point of training harder. I'm not even trolling, it's freaking working. One person who didn't agree though was Dr. Mike, who saw Greg's video and decided to react. Mike Isretel runs the Renaissance Periodization YouTube channel. He holds a PhD in sports physiology and has 2.3 million subscribers on YouTube. But unlike Coach Greg, he does not hold an IFBB Pro card, something we'll come back to later. On the 9th of December 2019, four days after Greg uploaded his first video, Mike gave an interview with a fellow bodybuilder in a video titled Mike Isretel vs Greg Doucette. It seems surprising looking back now, but Mike actually had nothing but nice things to say about Coach Greg in the beginning. His physique is excellent, his strength is, is just super impressive, and I've, I've heard uh, nothing but good things about him. This seems to be where the compliments end though, as Mike starts to question Greg's advice and actually contradicting quite a bit of it. I'm pretty sure I saw the entire video by Greg. He never actually answers the question of how much. He just says, go harder, and he yells a lot, which is funny, but um, it's precious little to learn from that other than go hard. Greg is a champion of training harder than last time and pushing your own limits, whereas Dr. Mike's approach is much more scientific, looking at your cumulative fatigue, your MRV, MAV, and a lot of other abbreviations. To the average viewer and casual gym goer, this can be seen as quite a lot of information to take in and actually pretty confusing. But Mike's audience come to him to see this in-depth approach he takes, so presumably enjoy this sort of take on bodybuilding, which is obviously quite different to Coach Greg's. Oh. They're all gonna give me chicken broccoli and rice! In the interview Mike gave, he gives a balanced view, acknowledging while that intensity is crucial, there's also a need to consider overall volume and the fatigue that comes with high intensity training. He highlights the importance of finding a balance that allows for consistent progress over time without burning out, contradicting Greg's idea of just training harder and harder. This is what caused them to butt heads in the first place, as the top question Mike asked was are the marginal gains from training to failure worth the vastly increased fatigue. After Dr. Mike released this interview, you should know by now that this wouldn't be the end of it and Coach Greg wasn't going to let Mike have the last word. Three days after this interview came out, on the 12th of December 2019, Greg of course uploaded his emphatic response video and in true Greg fashion did not hold back his thoughts. After Mike said 2-3 to three reps was close to failure, Greg strongly disagreed with him and wasn't afraid to tell Mike this in a very unique way. 2-3 to three reps? Reps shy of failure is close to failure. Come on, no it's not. Two to three reps shy of failure is a warm up set for this boy. 
I don't train like a pussy. Essentially, Greg is worried that viewers will take the wrong message from Mike's videos. As he talks about not training too hard because it'll mean you can't train as much that week due to soreness and fatigue. But to the average viewer and new gym goer, this could be seen as a free pass to go easy on yourself and train too light. He criticized Dr. Mike for training like an ultra pussy because of it too, saying only one week of his training cycle was actually worth it. But he says, I start my reps in reserve below average. So I don't even train as hard as the average person. Then halfway through my mesocycle, say by week three out of six, he's at average. Then he ends it at the elite hard training like me and Jeff Cavalier. So really he trains like ultra pussy, then normal pussy, then hard. So seven weeks of the training, he's got two kind of what I would call hard training. The main takeaway from this video was that Mike spoke incredibly well and is clearly highly educated on the subject matter, talking about very high level and advanced techniques on tracking your training. But according to Coach Greg, for 99% of people, this information would completely go over their heads. Obviously, this wasn't going to end here. And after Greg and Mike separately spoke on each other's ways of training, it was time for a face-to-face -face debate and get to the bottom of who is right and who is wrong. Mike reached out to Omar Isof and asked him to host a debate with Greg. And on the 18th of December, our dreams were finally realized. In a debate which lasted nearly an hour and a half, Greg and Mike had it out and tried to talk out the differences in training methodology and the philosophy behind it. This wouldn't go as Dr. Mike expected it to and the comment section was equally as surprising. Five minutes into the debate, they had their first disagreement about something as simple as a definition of training volume. While Greg took the straightforward approach of counting how many reps and sets in a workout, Mike took the approach to only count hard sets in the volume and gave a lot of explanation and equations as to why. Yeah, I would define volume just a tiny bit differently. So the concept Greg is defining is called mathematical volume. It's when you uh, do all the multiplication sets times reps times weight times distance. But I think uh, slightly one that does a little bit more for us in training is talking about the number of hard sets. It's a roughly effective uh, as far as hypertrophy for all the rep ranges within there because as the you know weight goes up, the per repetition stimulus for hypertrophy goes up, but also you have fewer repetitions. This really set the tone for how the debate would go. One point to note early on is that Greg didn't bring his online persona to this debate. And unlike his videos, which feature a larger than life character of himself, he was very laid back and well-spoken in this video, which Mike may have not been expecting as he admitted later on. For now though, the debate was in full swing and they were disagreeing with each other at almost every point. Although it was actually Mike disagreeing with Greg the majority of the time as he disagreed with his simplistic approach to sharing fitness advice with his audience. He knows what that exact amount is. So I'm just trying to give a suggestion of how you would know you're also giving a yeah. suggestion. And so pick so one you like. Mine is seems to be based on proxy indicators for hypertrophy, the pump, perception of tension in the muscle, uh, the amount of fatigue and soreness and performance. Yours seems to be based on the 10% number, and I've just, uh, you know, one of those might be more precise than the other, and one of those might auto-regulate better to an individual over time than the other. Greg actually said that Dr. Mike wasn't wrong, he just teaches in a very hard to understand way. This point was reinforced after Greg reminded Dr. Mike that his audience weren't professional bodybuilders and degree holders like either of them. The average person, when you said what you just said, doesn't understand that. Like when you're saying, do you feel the tension in the muscle? Like the average person doesn't know, am I still feeling my biceps when I do the curler? Like they don't know. Despite this, the debate was filled with disagreements on mainly training volume and training till failure. The comments on this video were surprisingly mixed too, with people saying that Mike made way more sense and brought up better points. But on the flip side, one of the most liked comments was, Greg left his ego at the door for this one, Mike didn't. And this was because throughout the entire video, Mike looked tired, yawning during some of Greg's arguments and actually came off looking pretty annoyed and arrogant throughout the whole thing. He actually revealed that he joined this debate not to have an amicable discussion, but to destroy and embarrass him intellectually, which may not have been the best headspace for Mike to interview in. Over the years, they've had a couple more debates and run-ins, but they never seemed 
be any major malice, especially to the levels we'll come to see. Around nine months ago in November of 2023, Mike uploaded a video where he walked around the Olympia Expo asking bodybuilders awkward questions. He was poking fun at a lot of the bodybuilders, but they weren't really personal insults and all in good fun, which was until he did his segment with Coach Greg. Guys, I'm here with Greg <laughs> Doucette. Coach it's Greg. It's harder than last time. How are you, buddy? I'm doing fantastic. That's awesome. What do you think's the best part of the Olympia? I would say meeting the fans, to be honest. It's I love incredible. the fans. They're great. It's incredible. Mike's fans comment is how spot on the impersonation of Coach Greg was, with them likening his voice to that of a bird's squeal. Other fans commented that he was being completely unprofessional and quite offensive, but very funny at the same time. One person who didn't find it funny, though, was Greg, who, despite laughing along with it, revealed his true thoughts later on. Throughout this entire section, they don't stop holding hands either, which just adds to the awkward of the situation. After this incident is where the real degradation in their relationship seems to begin, as it wasn't long after this that Greg started his onslaught of videos about Mike after he tried to go for his IFBB Pro Card. As we mentioned earlier, Mike is missing his Pro Card, something that is really seen as an end goal for most bodybuilders and validation of their hard work. And Dr. Mike clearly works hard and has the results to prove it. However, due to different factors, including his suboptimal genetics, he hasn't yet achieved this goal. So at the age of around 40 years old, he started to chase this dream again. Unfortunately though, this involves taking quite a lot of different steroids. But with Mike being a doctor in this field, you'd assume he knows the risks involved and decided that they're worth it in pursuit of his dream. In his pursuit though, he seemed like he was starting to get some unexpected side effects. The first were the physical effects, which were developing clubbed fingers due to the substances he was using. However, the main and most worrying side effects seemed to be the mental health issues. He's admitted that every day he is on a high dose, he is actually afraid for the rest of the day due to his crippling anxiety and as a direct result of these drugs. Anxiety like you would not believe. Every day that I'm on high doses, I wake up in the morning afraid of the rest of my day. If he's not feeling anxious, then he is feeling uncontrollable rage, to the point where he said he actually wants to attack people in the gym. Obviously, this is quite alarming, and someone who picked up on this is Coach Greg, who covered a lot of Mike Isretel in the past few months. He's uploaded numerous videos about Mike, urging him to stop pursuing his pro card because of the potentially life-threatening issues which are cropping up. Obviously, he's been accused of clickbaiting, and using Mike's name, but there seems to be a genuine concern in these uploads. Some of the videos have been titled Mike Isretel Needs Help, It's Time to Stop Mike Isretel and More. The essence of all these videos are the same though, and it's cause for him to stop competing and focus on his health. Eventually, after some time, in mid-2024, Mike announced on Instagram that he was no longer going to push for his pro card. Whether this because of Greg's videos or his health situation, it doesn't matter, as he was finally putting his health first. Obviously, Greg made a video about Mike announcing his retirement, laughing at what he saw as a poor excuse for Mike to have failed to attain his pro card, but ultimately agreed with Mike's decision to retire. After getting into objectively the best shape of my life, I placed out of the top five at my most recent show, in large part, sort of hilariously, because of insufficient tanning. It wasn't the tan. It wasn't the 10. This is when things start to get a bit spicy. Mike had been pretty quiet about Greg's videos, which may seem surprising, but what's even more surprising is that you've watched all this way without subscribing to my channel, so make sure you're subscribing now. But the real surprise was that Mike dropped this bombshell interview, seemingly out of nowhere, with Zach T. Lander, titled Why Mike Isretel Hates Greg Doucette. Now we know the history of their online beef, this interview makes a lot more sense but it's still shocking nonetheless. Mike didn't hold back his thoughts on Greg and gave a full breakdown on what happened in his debate with him, including why Mike thought he fell hook, line, and sinker for Greg's tricks. Greg Doucette, who is a two-faced, lying, sociopath <laughs> sucker, he talked mad in his videos with his fake voice about how stupid I was and how wrong I was about volume or whatever it was about. And I was like, oh, this guy wants a shot at the title. So when we got face to face in a debate, I mirrored that energy. And he turned off his parrot voice and went straight into nice guy agreeable mode. And almost all the comments were like, oh my God, this Mike guy's a asshole. And this Greg guy just came to the conversation to try to learn. No, he didn't. He's trying to learn shit. He's like just totally two-faced. I was like, oh God damn it. Like I fell hook, line and sinker for that. 
this was an emphatic interview, dropping multiple bombshell claims that he has text message evidence that Greg only punches up and chases drama. Although this isn't really a surprise as his entire channel is about fitness drama and he's pretty open about that fact. But Mike also claimed that Greg came into the interview with a plan to deceive Mike with his fake personality, leaving his online persona at the door and coming in acting nice and agreeable. Well, it seems like Mike may have overanalyzed this too, or Coach Greg knows how to play to the crowd, as Greg was quick to respond to this, leaving a comment on the original video to get your popcorn ready. So the original clip was uploaded on the 13th of August 2024, and just three days later, on the 16th, Greg had uploaded his response, and of course, brought his popcorn. He titled the video, Mike Isratel Hates Me, Who's the Real Sociopath? and actually brings up some good points about Mike, including how his steroid usage is potentially allowing his anger to build up and stop him from thinking clearly. He also brought up the incident from the Olympia Expo when Mike tried to embarrass Greg with an impression of his voice and gave his thoughts and feelings on that interview. At the Olympia, you approached me and deliberately made fun of me, you made fun of my voice, you joked about me, you put me down, and what did I do? I was a good sport because, hey, it's a YouTube video. Most of the video is arguments as to why Greg wasn't actually being two-faced in the interview years ago, as Mike claimed he was, with Greg stating he was just being himself and genuinely trying to learn. All in all, this online beef seemed to have stemmed from the original debate they had about the best way to coach and present information on YouTube. Things have started to snowball, especially after Dr. Mike's recent interview with Zach T. Lander. Many people have pointed out that Mike may actually hold jealousy to Greg as he holds an IFBB Pro card and that Mike may feel as though he's more knowledgeable and deserving. So that's the reason he's upset. It stands to be seen if they'll do another debate, but with the insults that Mike threw at Greg, I think we can be sure this won't happen anytime soon. And if you like this video and want to see more, click the video that's on your screen now, and I'll see you in the next one. And so highly recommend you go and follow Big Craig, 31,000 followers.